Well, hi. So, as you can see, we're in a new location. We're back in my bedroom. Not on the floor this time. Round of applause. And that is why. And that's because. That's why. That because. That's because. That's why. I have no idea. That's because I built a desk last night with the help of my dad. And we built a desk. And we also built me this new chair. Oh my god, the camera just halted. We also built me this new chair. So now I have a place to sit and film. And a computer is right next to me. So now I can do reaction videos if I want to. So we're doing another movie commentary today. And that movie commentary is on Tall Girl, the Netflix original movie. Now, I'm sure you guys have all seen Tall Girl. It's like, Tall Girl, it's like one of the most popular Netflix movie is like now it's like on their top 10 list and I watched it and it was It was very very unoriginal it was very unoriginal and very cliche so I know you guys really like these commentaries I like filming them so without further ado let's just get into it so tall girl is basically about this girl named jody jody is a very tall girl <laughs> no pun intended and she's about six foot one i want to say and you know what and uh she is in her junior year of high school i want to say and she falls in love with this guy who walks in literally on the first day of school of junior year named Stieg, and he is from Sweden. She falls in love with, with the foreign exchange student, and she has a male best friend named Dunkelman, or Dunkers, as um, Stieg likes to call him. And she is an arch enemy, and it's a cliche high school movie. It's about her overcoming her fear and her insecurities about being tall, and it's really cliche but i enjoyed it like i enjoyed many aspects about the movie so as you guys know we're going to go through my thoughts about the movie which we kind of already did so now we're going to go through maybe five clips about the movie and we're just going to discuss them in detail and then i'm going to say if it's worth watching so without further ado let's get into some of the clips so the first clip i'm going to show you guys is so the first clip I'm going to show you guys is basically the opening scene of the movie where this guy kind of asks out Jody and then she stands up and he's like, never mind because you're so tall. So I'll just play that clip for you guys right here. Um, I should probably go. Hey, look, no. I know I've only known you for like two minutes, but... Would you maybe wanna? Wait, maybe wanna what? <laughs> oh yeah. That was the opening scene for the movie, and then she goes, Jody. She goes on this monologue, basically where she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm way too tall," and I wear size thirteen. Like, is it Nikes? I think it's Nikes. And like, oh my god, it's so hard for me. It's so tough. Because everyone else in the school is shorter than me. And then it's like... I don't even know what day it is. It's probably the same day. Her... One of her best friends come... One of her best friends come in. His name's Jack. And... He's been in love with Jody for like the past 10 years, as usual. But she's never noticed him before in that way. She's never liked him in that way. So he always tries his hardest to, you know, be like her romantic interest, I bet, to like gain her romantic interest. And he does do that by the end of the movie. You know, obviously, cliche movie. But um, they're talking about this... G they're talking about like Jody's perfect guy, and and Jack he points out he goes, you you think that perfect guy is just gonna walk through the door immediately and you're just gonna fall instantly in love with him, and then the Swedish guy walks through the door and yeah, and you know what I also want to say that Jack throughout the entire movie, 
he carries a, um, he carries like a milk crate with all his books in it. Instead of using a book bag, which you'll find out later why he carries that crate around with him by the end of the movie. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the scene where the Swedish guy walks in and everyone's like shocked by his beautiful handsomeness. So, roll the clip. Moment, so I'm taller than you. Perfect guy is just gonna walk through that door. And basically, after the clip where I just showed you, basically where Steve comes in, he solves this math, well no, not math problem, this science problem, Basically, he solves this science problem, and everyone's so impressed by him. And then, after the movie, no, not after the movie, what am I talking about? After that scene, basically, um, Jack Dunkelman, the guy that carries his stuff around in a milk crate, basically says to Jody about like this thing with her torso, since Stieg is so tall, and since Jody's so tall, like, if they have a child, she'll have to have a C-section. And he says something weird about her torso. I, I don't even remember that, but that was a little weird and a little creepy <laughs> to say to a girl that you've liked for, like, 10 years. But, yeah. And after that scene, she has this girl, like, f like enemy. She, she has this enemy named Kimmy. And Kimmy can speak Spanish, Swedish, and French. So... Great. <laughs> and she already marks her territory with Stieg, because since Jody has fallen head over heels for him basically in like a minute, Kimmy marks her territory and she belongs to Stieg now. Her and Stieg are dating. And uh, with her and Stieg dating, Jody uh, doesn't get the chance to be able to, I don't know, like date Stieg. So she just decides to let go of it, and yeah, that's basically it. And with uh, her height, her dad, played by Steve Zane, or Zahn, I think it's Steve Zane, he hired, she goes home the next day, and her dad has this support, he has this support group set up, basically where like all these tall people come together and they just say that she's just like a normal girl. She, she, she's just taller than most people. And she gets so upset and offended by this that she just tells her dad off and she just goes to her room and she cries about it. And then Kimmy and her friend call her. I don't know what the friend's name was because he was very forgettable. I feel like all the characters in the movie were forgettable except for uh, Jack Dunkelman. He, he's probably the best character in the movie. Because it's so quirky and fun. But Kimmy and her friend call Jody. And they impersonate. They like impersonate Stieg's voice. And they're like, do you want to go to um, homecoming with me or something? And Jody's like, yeah. And then she says, wait, Kimmy. And then Kimmy just laughs on the phone. So I'm going to insert that clip here because it's just so, so funny. This is Jody. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm the new exchange student in your school. You know, <laughs> Splendid for it. I just looked it up. And, and then, after that scene, uh, Steve basically invites Jody over to his house to watch movies, to watch like a musical film. Because before, prior to this scene happening, uh, Jody catches him like in the music room in the piano room. And basically, he goes, oh my god, you like musicals? I do too. And they're talking about guy, the musical Guys and Dolls. And then they start singing this song. I think it's a song from Cats. And they start singing, and Kimmy catches them just singing together and hanging out. And yeah, that basically happened. And then I'm going to go back to the scene where he and Jody over to his house. He's staying with... Um, Jack Dunkelman, the kid with the milk crate, his, him and his family are Steak's host family. So, Jody goes over to his house, to Jack's house, thinking that they have like a study night or something. And she's actually hanging out with Steak. So, awkward. <laughs> and, yeah, Steak, no, no, not Steak, Jack basically interrupts them. 
and he says, oh yeah, I want to, can I, can I join? And then Stig's like, yeah, sure. And then he gets in between Jody and Stig, and it's just really awkward. And then after that, I think they're watching like, the sound of music, actually. I think they are. I don't know. It, it was a very, like, unoriginal movie, as I said before, but it was fine. I still enjoyed it, but I forgot a lot of it. So, great. This commentary is going great. And then after they have, like, their little date night, Steve and Jody get on the train back to her house because they live in New, in New Orleans. And she kisses Jody, and then Jody kisses Stieg, and even though he's dating Kimmy, romantic feelings start to emerge, and then he asks Jack what he should do, and then Jack basically says, you should just forget about Jody and just keep dating Kimmy because Jack secretly, he's, Jack is secretly like in his head, if I keep Stieg and Jody apart, maybe Jody will fall for me because I'm the only available guy around, and Stieg is taken by Kimmy, yay! And then that basically happens, and Jody gets mad at Jack, who basically said, like, he should just, saying that Jody should just lay off Stieg, and she's mad at him for a while because she thought that Stieg was avoiding her after the date night that they had, and then all of a sudden, um, Jack starts to date this girl who's, like, vegan and gluten-free, and they don't have any chemistry. It was just like a plot point to basically to basically drive Jody and Jack further apart than they already were. So yeah, that happens. And Sabrina Carpenter's in this movie too. She is the older sister of Jody, but she's so much shorter. I guess that's like a joke that they have in this movie. And basically, she's like a talent. She's like a pageant girl who wins all these pageants and everything. And she's training for her other pageant. And throughout the movie, she goes to the pageant. And she wins, obviously, because she's the pageant girl. And yeah, that basically happens. <laughs> and then the girl and Jack, who is gluten-free and vegan, uh... They're dating, they're, they go to this party that Steve throws at his house, and basically stuff happens with Jody and Steve. They just talk in the kitchen for like a minute, and then Jody goes home really, 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 really upset, and basically that happens, and then the, 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 the gluten-free girl sends Jody this video uh, about Jack basically taking a punch for Jody. Um, the friend... Kimmy's friend uh, makes fun of Jody, and Jack gets into a fight with that guy, and he goes to Steve. He he's like really mad at Steve because Steve has been such a jerk, because he was so cool before, but now he's a jerk, like every other cliche movie ever. And then he points out like so many of these facts to Jody. So yeah, after that scene happens, uh, Jack points out to Steve all of these facts. Uh, about Jody that make him so worthy of her. He says like, what's her eye color? What's her birthday? What's her favorite book? Like, do you know that she's reading a hundred books before she turns 21? Like all the bestsellers. And I, I think I think him and Steve get into a fight too. Like I have no idea what happens because the movie was so forgettable. And yeah, basically Jody sees the video, she tears up. <laughs> Basically, Jody she sees the video and she tears up, and she decides to go to homecoming with no one, and she goes to homecoming. Sabrina Carpenter has won prom queen or something. I have no idea. I think that was also the day of her pageant, so she came to support her sister Jody, and then Jody goes to homecoming, and then obviously Kimmy and Stieg win homecoming king queen. And that happens. And after that, um, Jody she goes out wearing this like I don't even know what she's wearing. What she's wearing, it kinda looks like a school band uniform. It, it really looks like a school band uniform that she's wearing. I have no idea. But 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 it looked really good on her. I really like the outfit that they chose for that scene. And she goes to the homecoming dance and she makes a speech about her being tall and how that shouldn't define her. 
and saying how she's all these other things and tall she's a sister and everything and she's been a terrible friend but she's also been a great friend and she basically like told Kimmy off by saying I kissed your boyfriend when I knew you were dating him and then Kimmy's like what and then after that speech basically um she leaves the stage everyone all of a sudden says oh my god we respect you so much now, now, now that you've said all that it's so great we respect you so much it's so great and then um she's about to leave and then Steak says, Jody, Jody, wait, can we start over? Uh, I broke it off with Kimmy, can we please start over? Your speech was amazing. And then she goes, no, I'll start over, but with someone else. And obviously, guess what she does? She goes over to Milk Crate Boy's house, Jack's house, and she sees this black eye, and she goes, why, well, why didn't you tell me the real reason you got that black eye? And he goes, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And she goes, I'm just making some mental readjustments to my boyfriend checklist or whatever she says. I have no idea. <laughs> and then um, uh, he goes and I make it over 50% because at the beginning of the movie, like, he, she already knew about these feelings that he had for her. But he was at like 30% or something. But throughout like the hour and a half movie, he basically made it like way over 50%. He ba he basically made it like over fifty, uh, over fifty percent. So, um, he basically um takes the milk crate that he had for like the past ten years that he used to carry all his books in. He puts it down like on the front porch where they're standing. He steps up onto it, and he uses this to be taller than her so that they can have their first kiss as a couple. And that's basically how the movie ends. <laughs> what? Nothing. I'm just making some mental revisions to my perfect boyfriend checklist. Well, did I make it over 50%? Way over. Ready for what? So, great. Uh, yeah, that's basically how the movie ends. And she gives this, like, ending monologue basically said, basically that says, we can either, like, lay low or we can stand tall. It doesn't matter what we are. If we're different, that's all that matters. And basically, that's how Tall Girl ends the movie. That, that, that's, basically, that, that's basically how the movie ends. It was such a cliche cliche ending and movie so yeah in conclusion you guys that was basically my commentary for the netflix original movie tall girl if you guys like this commentary be sure to comment and subscribe to my channel and like the video and subscribe to my channel for more of these commentaries i really love making them and i know you guys really enjoy watching them they're some of the most popular videos on my channel which is really surprising so yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this commentary. I have a lot of new, like, different type of videos coming out within the next few weeks. And I have some more commentaries in the process of being filmed and edited. And yeah, you know, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content. I make videos, like, once every week or every two weeks. I upload what I... I, I upload at least twice a week, so I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary, and I hope you guys really enjoyed the video, so bye.